you think Bitcoin will be disruptive in that way? I mean, now it's a speculative currency. Will it be something that will be what normal consumers will use and will disrupt the banking industry? Now, my opinion of Bitcoin is that, uh, I, I mean, I think Bitcoin is probably a good thing, um, but it's, it's essentially, uh, it, it, its main th thing will be, I mean, this will probably be get quoted here and there, but the, it, 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 it's, it, it's, I think it's primarily gonna be a means of, of doing illegal transactions. <laughs> um, but that's not necessarily entirely bad. Because you know, <laughs> you know, some things should be, maybe shouldn't be illegal. Uh, so, um, but the combination of Silk Road and Bitcoin will save us. Well, it, it will be useful for legal and illegal transactions. Otherwise, it would have no value as a use of uh, for for legal transactions because you have to have a legal to illegal bridge. Yeah. Um, I don't own any Bitcoin. Well, yeah. right. Need to move money from place to place. The cost of doing so, the overhead, as you put it, makes me think, believe it or not, of Bitcoin. Because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to... Ha be physically in the same place, and of course, for large transactions, currency can can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about aren't trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So, it, 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 the Bitcoin technology is key, and you could add to it, or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with. Uh, terrorism or uh, any type of, of money laundering. If you ask what are the things where there's, you know, what, what's very charismatic uh, and that people are not paying enough attention to, I think there are these pockets in biotech that I, I find like that. You know, the one other one that I've, I've, I've been looking at a lot more have been the uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, and, uh, and while I'm skeptical of, of most of them, uh, I, I do think people are are um, are a little bit uh, are maybe maybe underestimating Bitcoin uh, specifically because it is like it's like a reserve form of money. It's like gold, um, and um, and it's just a store of value. You don't actually need to use, to use it to make payments. And it's been you know it's there's about seventy billion dollars worth of Bitcoin in the world. There's nine trillion worth of gold, and um, and if Bitcoin ends up being the cyber equivalent of gold, you know, it has a it has a it has a great potential left. So that's and it's a it's a very different kind of thing from what people in Sil Sil people in Silicon Valley normally focus on companies, not you know algorithms or protocols. But uh, this may be this may be uh, one exception that's uh, that's very underestimated. Well, people question it, and I know there's been so much debate about Bitcoin, but they question it because what is it based on? I mean, you see that the dollar is based on. You know, the, the trust of the Treasury, the trust of the U.S. government. What is Bitcoin based on? Well, the, the argument, it's, it's based on the, um, on the security of the map, which tells you that it can never be, um, it can never be diluted by a government. It can, never, um, it can never be, it can't be hacked, um, and it's a form of money that's absolutely, uh, that's secure in an absolute way. Um, and, uh, of course, you could ask the same questions about gold. That's why I used the gold analogy. You could say, what's, what is gold based That's on? True. Why is gold yeah. valuable? Well, it's a, it's a tangible asset, though, gold. It's a tangible asset, but it's also hard to mine. So if it was easy to mine gold, then it wouldn't be that valuable because we would just have way more gold. So Bitcoin is also, um, it's, it's, it's mineable like gold. It's hard to mine. It's, it's actually harder to mine than gold. And so in that sense, um, it's, it's more constrained. And so, yeah, there, there are a number of things that... Uh, that, uh, that I think make it somewhat similar to gold, and then the question is just, does this become, does this become um, more widely? And, and it's anonymous, widely. right? I mean, that's one of the, the beauties of it. You it's, can be anonymous using Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, it's half anonymous, half not. So it's, it's, again, this intermediate thing. There's a question whether that's right or not, but it's, it's a bearer instrument. So if you, if you have the Bitcoin, if you know the key, you can, you can go anywhere. Most of the time, um, most securities are registered, not bearer securities. So it's a very unusual kind of a security. It's not a currency. I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 it does not meet the test of a currency. It, 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 uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 or 20 years. Why does it not meet the definition of a currency? Well, because 
People say, well, I'll sell you goods in bitcoins, but they change the price of those every time the price of the dollar changes in relation to the bitcoin. They're pricing off the dollar. They could say, well, I'll sell it to you in barrels of oil, but if they ch every time the price of oil changes, they change the number of barrels you have to have. That's not, your, your oil is not the currency. Let me ask you about bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin, people say the same thing. It's a store of value. You've got to have it diversified. The dollar's not safe. There are two purposes of a currency. Is it a medium of exchange? And is it a storehold of wealth? Those are the basic ingredients. Bitcoin is not an effective medium of exchange by and large. And, uh, and, uh, if I go, ch I have a Bitcoin, I want to go buy things. It's not easy to buy things with the Bitcoin. And in terms of a storehold of wealth, a storehold of wealth uh, more reflects, like gold more reflects the opposite of what money is doing, right? And so you look at it, it's a storehold of wealth. Bitcoin is a speculative, uh, it's a speculative bubble, right? Its price is like a greater fool theory in terms of its price. If you say, what is its intrinsic value? If, if Bitcoin was made into a more effective medium of exchange, and also uh, operated in terms of a storehold of wealth, not of the reflection of that volatility, it would be a, a viable instrument. It is, to me, a vehicle for speculation that's attracting people in, and it has all the classic ingredients of a bubble, people leveraging themselves up, and it doesn't have the, uh, that same intrinsic value. Even the privacy value, okay, is suspicious. In other words, it has a purpose to some extent. If you're living in a country and you don't know your currency, uh, it was whether it's going to be good or not, and you might hold, try to hold that. But that thing you're holding is running around like crazy for reasons that you don't understand. And then, it, so it's not going to be an effective storeholder of wealth. And the privacy will be stress tested. In other words, governments are examining who is operating in their own clever ways of what that, and so you can't even assume that so it's going to be a privacy vehicle. So I don't see the effectiveness of Bitcoin. I could see uh, cyber secure, uh, currencies and, and so on, uh, but cryptocurrencies. But this is not what we're having. It's, it's, you know, it's a possibility that I think is, has been captured as a speculative vehicle that's in the middle of a bubble.